All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be doing a guide on everything that you need to do to prepare for the release of patch 1.5 and all the new content and the higher gear score. The most important thing to note is that you're gonna be farming regular credits. How you do this is up to you, but some of the most efficient ways that I've ever heard of and ever found are farming the light zone or the persistent world for named bosses. And I'm actually throwing up a map right here that I've created myself, marking every single location of a named boss uh, a little description of where they are so you can find them quickly. It takes under an hour and you can get a ton of credits, probably over 3 million easy per run. Uh, and you can do it on multiple characters. So having multiple characters is a great idea uh, as preparation for this patch. And then farming the Persistent World bosses, getting all the different pieces of gear and then selling them. The second thing to note is that you want to free up your inventory and your stash. I would actually recommend deconstructing or selling, preferably selling, but deconstructing if you don't have any crafting materials. Every single piece of gear that you currently have other than one dedicated PvE build. And for that PvE build, I would recommend having four-piece Striker, as it is extremely powerful for destroying PvE mobs, uh, and a Medved, the named shotgun that you can get from Clear Sky. But other than that, the Pacan, which is actually available in the base of operations, because both those two guns have Ferocious and Destructive, which make them excel at completing PvE content. And then using something like the Accomplished Knee Pads, which triple the experience from Accolades. Now what that means is faster proficiency caches, which means more Phoenix credits and more gear to sell for regular credits. The gist of this entire video is going to be maxing out your currencies. Uh, I would recommend doing underground after you farm the Persistent World bosses. Those are actually probably the fastest way, but after that is done, I would recommend going to the underground. Now if you're trying to get Phoenix credits as well, I would recommend having 2,000 before going into this patch. Uh, you can run you know, multiple directives, you can run five directives, four directives, or three, whatever you're comfortable with. You can run hard mode or challenge mode, again, whichever is easier for you. Whichever you can complete the fastest is what you should be running. And both of those will give you maxed out gear, which you can then sell for about 50,000 credits a piece. I would recommend getting uh, multiples of 4 million credits, uh, because that's going to allow you to achieve, for every 4 million credits, about 10 sealed caches once the actual content drops. The current pricing for the sealed caches, when the new content drops, buying with regular credits is about 400,000 per, which means 4 million will allow you to buy 10, 40 million will allow you to buy 100. Uh, I only am sitting at about 18 million credits, about 700,000 DZ funds, and about 900 Phoenix credits. I would prefer to have maxed out Phoenix credits, and I will before the patch is released. I have 2,000. I would prefer to have about 10 million DZ funds because the checkpoint vendors around the Dark Zone are going to have relevant blueprints. Maybe you're not a fan of going into the Dark Zone, maybe you've never really wanted to, but there really has never been a better time to get used to it because the different checkpoints that reset weekly around the Dark Zone are going to have useful things. Uh, out of all those 10 different vendors or more, there's a lot of different places where you can get gear that requires DZ funds. There's going to be something that you want. There might be a perfect stamina mod. There might be a great vigorous chess piece. There might be a perfect holster. You never really know. So it's very important to have DZ funds and have all of your currencies maxed out. And also, like with any new content, when the gear score gets increased, you're going to be re-rolling like every single piece of gear that you get. Essentially, all the items that you get, including weapons, which actually cost Phoenix credits to re-roll, you're going to be re-rolling all of them uh, for better attributes, for different attributes, just tweaking, getting those last final percentage points. Uh, and to do that requires regular credits. And since you're going to be revamping your entire character, you again want to have as many credits as possible. I would recommend farming the light zone as fast as possible. That's the primary method. Uh, the underground as a secondary method. And then amassing DZ funds in the actual dark zone uh, by killing players or by running off rank 1 rogue timers. Now, outside of that, there's a few more things that you can do. Leveling an alt character is going to be great. They are increasing the stash size. This is confirmed. You will have 150 slots in your stash to store gear. But that also means that alt characters are going to be even more valuable. Now that you can carry so much gear in your stash, which is not a bad thing at all, but in my eyes, it actually increases the value of having alternate characters rather than decreases. You're not going to want to sort through your entire stash to get out that one build that you want to use in that single scenario. So at leveling an alternate character not only presents you with more space to, to hold gear, but it also presents you with the fact uh, that you can spec out that character for a specific role. And then every time you would want to, let's say, switch your entire build, instead of fumbling through your mods and your gear in your stash or on your other character, uh, you have it ready to go, all equipped on a different agent, and you can just log out and log back in. I think that that's extremely valuable, and until we're presented with loadouts, which as of right now we don't think are coming, uh, with the new patch 1.5 and they probably will happen sometime in the future but in the foreseeable near future they are not going to be introduced into the game 
So having an alternate agent with all that different gear and a different build spec'd out on top of it is going to be really fantastic. Uh, so that's something I would recommend everyone to do as well. It also allows you to farm the Persistent World bosses more often. They respawn every four hours. So if you have three max out level 30 characters, you can then farm them three times per four hours. And since it takes a little bit under an hour per uh, full root farm, and you get about three million or more credits per run, uh, you're going to be able to do that almost constantly. Uh, and that is probably the most efficient way that I've found to get regular credits, Phoenix credits, and gear to sell uh, or deconstruct. That's going to wrap it up for my guide of all the best ways to prepare. Again, things like the Pacan in the base of operations, the actual LMG gun with Ferocious and Destructive on it, may seem like something that you're going to pass over. You're never going to use them for PvP. However, they are extremely valuable in preparation for patch 1.5 because as soon as that content drops, you want to be able to shred and annihilate the hardest content on World Tier 5 and get all the best gear because that's when it matters. That's when speed really matters. Uh, so doing that, picking up that gun before the patch, and having a build, preferably Striker in my eyes, or something similar, maybe something with Banshee for multiplicative damage to targets out of cover, is going to be really good. Or Lone Star for increased ammo capacity, farming up the Dark Zone for tons of extra credits, maxing out your Phoenix credits at 2,000, making sure you have some uh, crafting materials, preferably Division Tech as well, because it's versatile and can be converted back and forth uh, to whatever material that you need, is going to be essential. And preparing for this is going to set you apart from the rest of the agents when you have all the credits that you need to re-roll, you have all the resources at your disposal, and you're able to spec out, gear up, and create a competitive PvP build or even PvE a lot faster than other people who did not prepare accurately. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to support the channel, please check out the links below. That does it for our very basic, very vague guide on how to prepare for patch 1.5, which we do believe, and this is pure speculation, mind you, is coming on the 22nd. That is what we strongly believe due to some, what appears to be an internal leak in Microsoft or on Xbox where they accidentally showed November 22nd as the date and they do know things let's kind of assume that they have an insider track on some of this stuff Massive has neither confirmed nor denied that but I would strongly suspect that the content is going to be released on the 22nd and if not the 22nd very soon thereafter so preparing now is definitely going to set yourself up uh, for success in the future getting as many you know credits currencies crafting materials as possible leveling an alternate character and using the methods that we outlined in this video is going to give you a decided advantage over other agents when the content actually releases sorry to ramble on like this hopefully there's some good information if you guys want to check out and support uh different aspects of the channel please check out the links below and as always have a nice night